Spider-Man is one of the most popular and adored superheroes worldwide, amassing nearly $4 billion in his five cinematic adventures around the globe, alongside a slew of popular television series, video games, and a near never-ending success of merchandise. However, due to the wall crawler's cinematic rights being held by Sony Pictures, many fans reluctantly believed that for many years, we'd never get to see Peter Parker share the screen with his fellow Marvel heroes, such as Iron Man and Captain America. But now, with Spider-Man Homecoming only days away, it's important to examine just how this Sony Marvel deal came to be, and how Spider-Man was finally integrated into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Since gaining the rights to the character in 1999, Sony Pictures had maintained a firm grip on Spider-Man ever since, producing the wildly popular Tobey Maguire trilogy of films, and even after the critical failure that was Spider-Man 3 and the breakdown of director Sam Raimi's relationship with the studio, Sony were able to stave off any potential concerns with the rebooted Amazing Spider-Man series directed by Mark Webb and starring Andrew Garfield. However, this is where the cracks began to show for Sony. For example, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 failed to live up to the commercial success of its predecessors and failed to impress critics and fans of the series alike. In addition, it appeared that Sony executives, after 15 years at the helm, began to run out of ideas with the character and were simply treading water, while also promising a slew of spin-offs and standalone projects, including Sinister Six, Venom and the dreaded Aunt May prequel film. While Sam Raimi's Spider-Man series alongside Brian Singer's original X-Men trilogy were very much at the forefront of the superhero movie genre, in the early 2000s the subsequent years became dominated by a new player in the genre as Marvel Studios began to produce films themselves as opposed to licensing characters to other studios as they had done with the aforementioned franchises. Beginning in 2008 with the release of Iron Man, the MCU evolved into Hollywood's most successful franchise, grossing over $11 billion as of the release of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 worldwide. And while Sony's success with Peter Parker began to stagnate, Marvel became the gold standard of superhero movies, and as a result, rumblings began in late 2014 about a possible deal between the two companies. In November 2014, several high-profile Sony executives' email accounts were hacked, with the contents of said emails being leaked to the public. One of the major developments of the Sony hack was the debate over the future of the Spider-Man series. Several sources indicated that Sony was evaluating whether to proceed with the series' third reboot in less than a decade after the critical failure of Amazing Spider-Man 2, and even the possibility of bringing Sam Raimi back to return the series to prominence. However, the most notable of the leaks came in the form of discussions between Amy Pascal, the then co-chairperson of Sony Pictures, and Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. It was revealed that Feige, a former executive producer on the Spider-Man films, had sent messages prior to the release of Amazing Spider-Man 2, offering his constructive criticism towards the film, stating that there are too many storylines that we need to choose which ones we are focusing on, and lift the other ones out. While many of Feige's suggestions weren't acted upon in the final cut of the film, it establishes a known link of communication between Sony and Marvel. According to an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Feige later approached Pascal and Sony with an offer. Have Sony pay for the movie, distribute the movie, and market the movie. Just let us make the movie and incorporate him into our universe. Originally, Pascal was apprehensive about losing full control over the property and continued to explore the possibility of rebooting the Spider-Man series, but later formally agreed to Marvel's proposal just as she was ousted from her role as co-chairperson in early 2015. With the future of Spider-Man now under the guidance of Marvel, the studio wasted little time integrating him into the colossal shared universe, appearing briefly in 2016's epic Captain America Civil War, where he fought alongside Tony Stark and a team made up of War Machine, Black Panther, The Vision and Black Widow. This huge team-up movie gave us the first on-screen glimpse of the moments envisaged by Stanley and Steve Ditko 
Way back in 1962, just reimagined for the modern age of the genre. Marvel Studios' rendition of Spider-Man very much grounds itself in the contemporary, but with one eye back to the character's heritage, returning Spider-Man very much to his roots. For instance, while a sleek Stark tech suit that we see Spidey wear in the film fits the high-tech aesthetic of many of the current superhero movie costumes, it has a distinctly classic feel to it, harking back to the original character designs by Steve Ditko and later John Romita Sr., incorporating small stylistic elements such as the much smaller logo and the much smaller eyes in contrast to the amazing Spider-Man's Mark Bagley-inspired design, reminding us of the Spider-Man who saved the day long before Tobey Maguire swung onto screens back in 2002. In many unique ways, Marvel have brought Spider-Man back to his roots, and this is very noticeable in Homecoming, with the inclusion of underarm webbing on the costume, as well as grounding this incarnation of Peter Parker in high school, a period of which both previous series have quickly sought to move on from and yet is such an iconic period of the character's legacy. The Spider-Man we became familiar with in Civil War, and will no doubt begin to adore in Homecoming, stands apart from that of Maguire or Garfield, and not to the disservice of their performances, but in the reinstatement of the coming-of-age nature of the character, one which many fans, particularly those who grew up relating to the everyday struggles of Peter Parker, have come to identify with, and it's very much to the testament of Kevin Feige, Amy Pascal and everyone involved in bringing Sony and Marvel together and working together in order to finally bring us a cinematic Spider-Man who leaps from the pages of Amazing Fantasy 15 but still lands in present day New York straight into the modern day world of the Avengers and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's because of this that we're finally able to say that Spider-Man is truly home. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out today's video. Make sure to leave a comment down below and talk about anything we discussed in the video itself. And also, how excited are you for Spider-Man Homecoming? I can't wait to see it. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like the one you're watching right now. There are some videos on screen like this one that you may enjoy if you did indeed enjoy this one. One about some more of the cinematic history of Spider-Man and some other videos that you may enjoy. You can follow me on Twitter at OwenLexComics. And until next time, take care and keep reading.